Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. I have just tidied my dark room and now there is more furniture and what you can't see behind me is a whole flipping sofa. Um, <laughs> just to explain, my dark room is still generally tidy uh, but we are doing some decorating work so we've had to empty out one of the rooms in our house and so bits of furniture have been deposited in different rooms and these are the bits that are in here for the next few weeks. <laughs> this will not be a permanent feature although I do love having my books around me. Um, but on that note, let's do another darkroom update. Today I wanted to talk about the fact that even though right at this moment I am not in the mood to go out and take photos and I'm also not necessarily in the mood to actually use my darkroom as a darkroom, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a photographer. It doesn't mean that I'm not feeling inspired by the projects I've got coming up. Um, it just means that at the moment, I'm in the mood to do preparation <laughs> for projects um, that are coming up. I'm going to be taking you through some preparation work I'm doing for my mixed media projects, testing out different paints and different artistic mediums on top of my scrap prints from Vlogmas. Before we move on to the arty stuff, I wanted to take you through some other things that I'm really excited about. So first of all, let's talk about the Photography Through the Pandemic book because I don't think I've mentioned that since the video where I was saying the Kickstarter was launching, uh, but we were successful, we are funded, and um, Hamish and I are now working on all the edits and reviewing it and getting it absolutely spot on for the publishers, which includes so much little twiddly bits and pieces, and it gives me a whole new respect for people who do this as their day-to-day -day job, like people who actually do book publishing as their job, because there is so much to think about. There is so much reviewing and re-reviewing and tweaking and, you know, move this a millimeter to the left and align this and that and just so much to think about so it is taking a little while anyone who has uh pledged i am hoping to be done with all the edits very soon the other thing we're, we're doing is obviously respectfully pulling together the john whitmore dedication pages and his entry so that bit may take a little bit of time but yes we are plowing on with that in the background and then the other project which we have just announced myself uh analog wonderland and 35 mmc have been working on uh pulling together what we're calling the analog spotlight network essentially we just want to build something that's going to benefit businesses charities individuals communities who are interested in analogue and we have so many ideas and there's so much going on in the background um, but we've launched our survey if you haven't taken the survey there is a link in the description of this video uh, but essentially we want to hear from anyone who shoots film or anyone who is in any business that relate that is related to the analogue industry but what we mean by that is any sort of alternative photographic process so you don't necessarily have to shoot 35 millimeter film or 120 film it could be any process that's sort of an alternative to digital but we want to hear from everyone so that we can build what we're offering to the needs of the businesses to the needs of the community the very core of the business of the network is going to be improving access and driving film forward um, as an industry worldwide. In order to do that, we're going to be doing this membership-based network. People will be able to sign up for a membership. There'll be all sorts of benefits that we're going to do. We're going to do events. We're going to bring businesses together. We're going, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that's going to happen. Um, but the idea is to make money in order to put that back into the community and um, drive different projects forward. We want to be able to help fund projects um, and we want to reach areas of the community that don't necessarily get the representation and the attention that they deserve. So, <laughs> so yes, that has been something I've been very busy with in the background um, and I'm just, I am beyond excited 
beyond, beyond excited. Um, yeah, I'd really love for you to do the survey. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Analog Spotlight Network. Um, and of course, constructive criticism, welcome. Like what, you know, how do you think this would, how do you think this could work? How do you, what do you think we should be doing? What, you know, what could be done better? I'd just really love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, and so those are the two big projects that I've got going on behind the scenes. And now let's start to prepare for some of my actual photographic projects. Posca pens. I would like to reiterate the fact that this, all of these are just me having a go with the different mediums. So I wasn't trying to do anything too serious. I just wanted to see how the different paints, the different art mediums worked on the cotton rag paper from Ilford. So I wasn't necessarily trying to do anything in particular. I just wanted to see how it worked. And actually I don't mind the Posca pens. I can see how I might use them on other prints. So I'm quite happy with that one. Then we've got the inks. So I first of all started with using the actual sort of fountain pen type um, thing that you're supposed to use with ink thing, <laughs> whatever it's called, and quickly realized that actually perhaps a brush would be better. And although my work was quite uneven as I was getting a feel of how it, how it went onto the paper, I do think I quite like the inks. I think I would really like to try that again and see what effects I can get. I thought it almost looks like the negative of a colour photograph. <laughs> um, so this one made it re-bend. So when you use fiber-based paper and you dry it, it often goes very bendy and you have to flatten it. So obviously using a lot of water made the paper refold up on itself. I also wasn't particularly keen on how the watercolour went over it. I tried wet on wet, I tried wet on dry, dry on dry to see how it went. The only thing that I think went okay was this idea of sort of brushing the whole image with one colour to give it a tint, but otherwise I'm not particularly happy with how any of the rest of it went. Then we move on to the gouache. I would say it's not brilliant, but if you wanted something a lot more opaque to almost mask out areas of your image, then I really like the way the gouache went on. So we'll definitely consider this for future use. And then I have my like metallic. So it comes like a powder when you put water in it to paint and I actually really, I quite like how that came out. So yeah, another one where I'm like, I can see how I would use this. So, so yeah, good prep for some future projects that I have uh, coming up. So I will of course show you as I go along how those projects <laughs> come about, but yeah, we've done the prep work. 